Well, look at this. Once again, it's a wonderful Friday. Yep, it's Gay Detroit Night. Yes, and tonight we've got a wonderful girl called Julia Music. And uh, she's one of the organizers for the Ferndale Pride. And uh, she does a bloody good job at it, too. So she's going to be on the uh, show a little bit later. And we've got lots to talk about with Indiana, Oklahoma, Georgia, all with this religious freedom. And um, what kind of uh, impact it's going to have, not just only on the LGBT community, but how is it going to affect you, too? Because it will. I can assure you, yes, it will. Because... Religious freedom and the right to discriminate under religious freedom is actually going to affect everyone because it will not stop at being gay. It'll stop at, well, who you believe in and who you marry and what are your rights and what is your religion and we don't agree with you, so we can discriminate against you. This has been made law. And all this was done because of Hobby Lobby getting their religious freedom because they didn't want to supply certain um, certain drugs uh, that they thought was related to um, anti-abortion, uh, sorry, abortion drugs. And uh, it's just way too, way too much. Anyway, let's have some music. And uh, we'll start off with uh, Jeff Goot and uh, some wonderful music called Bitter Sweet. I'm James D. And you listen to Gay Detroit Radio. That's on www.radio. Dash op dot com. The beauty of a child gets tainted every day, and of all the things we love, there's that much more to hate. Broken promises are all that we can get From the politicians that allow us to live in hope In pain In every part of every day We drink defeat
our very own, very talented uh, young man called uh, Jeff Gooch and a bit of sweet. Um, before, uh, when we just started the intro, we were talking about uh, what's happening in the good old states. Well, as you know, the breaking uh, Indiana uh, governor, he actually signed the odious anti-LGBT bill. Um, amidst all the controversy, um, he still signed the bill. And uh, apparently, he doesn't care because um, the governor, um, Mike Pence, um, the far-right Republican governor of Indiana, he just signed the SB 101, a so-called religious freedom measure that sanctions religion-based discrimination against LGBT people and other minority groups. And that was into law just uh, yesterday, Thursday. Um, what people don't understand is, uh, because it, it, not only is this going to have ramifications business-wise, because there's certain people, uh, who I'm going to talk about, uh, after the, in the next section, who are going to actually pull out of Indiana because of this religious discriminatory bill. Um, it just is given license to anyone uh, if they don't like you, they can kick the crap out of you and they're going to get away with it. This is legalized bullshit. This is legalized bullying. This is legalized hatred. And yet it's still being allowed to push into to law. Uh, there's also a law that's going into California, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Is it a shoot the gays bill? And then they're going to have to counteract it with an anti-jackass bill. What the fuckheads is going on i really honestly this is totally ridiculous in oklahoma um ah oh dear uh the u.s senator jim inhole more like asshole uh in oklahoma uh, has just introduced an amendment to the Senate budget resolution that would allow businesses and organizations to access government contracts and other federal funds even if they discriminate against same-sex couples. In-hole asshole says... Oops, sorry, did I just slip up there? <laughs> says the amendment will protect the constitutional right for individuals, businesses, or organizations to peacefully and freely adhere to their religious beliefs. That is... Excuse me, but, you know, he really is an asshole. Really. That's not an innie. That's an assy. Really. Uh, also, there's another one here. Um, no. Georgia as well. You see, you've not to be deceived because the RFRA is not about religious liberty. Um, you know, it's, it's the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And it's been approved in uh, by the House of the Judiciary Subcommittee and is rapidly moving towards becoming law. This is in Georgia as well. Uh, these bills become popping up around the country uh, as the Supreme Court announced that it would begin hearings on marriage equality, which is likely to result in the legislation of same-sex marriages at a national level. Well, this logic has been used um, by many in support of these bills, but when it comes to the marriage equality law, the churches, businesses, and individu individuals may find themselves being forced to perform weddings, big wedding cakes, and ultimately endorse same-sex weddings. Ah, this is not forcing you. We are not here to actually destroy the institution of marriage. I've said this before. We cannot destroy the institution of marriage because you've totally screwed it up already. And the real institution of marriage was when a woman was sold off for her virginity for some acres of land or something like she came with a dowry. And uh, if she didn't have the money or the family didn't have money, she was sent off to a nunnery uh, or she became a woman's companion. So she was either doomed to be a lesbian, sold off as a slave to her husband because of her virginity, because if she wasn't a virgin, the contract was null and void, or you were sent off to be a nun. To get prayed, uh, to get actually played upon by the Catholic Church to um, be a slave for the rest of your natural born life. But apparently that was safe because you were married to God. Bullshit. 
This is total, total, absolute in hole asshole bullshit. This is just, I am so fed up of these people. We don't want to force you to do anything. If you don't want to marry us, if you don't want to bake cakes, if you don't want to make dresses, suits, or don't want to hire your limousines out to us, fine. We'll find somebody who does. Because I've said it from the day one. Even if you don't agree with it, jump on the cash cow. Because Michigan alone can actually earn at least $53 million. $53 million. That's just for same-sex weddings. Not counting the other weddings. $53 million. And yet everybody's screaming out for money. Hello? Let's have some music. Actually, I'm going to be interviewing a, a young man next week um, called Don Miller. And uh, he sent me some music, so we're going to listen to a couple of his songs today as well. And uh, I do believe we're going to have a little introduction and interview to the wonderful Don Miller next week. How wonderful is that? Actually, I've heard the songs. They're very, very good. So I'm actually now going to sing, uh, not sing, let him sing. And here's um, Don Miller and one of his songs. I'm James D, and you're listening to... Gay Detroit Radio. Be right back.
Yes, yeah, a very talented sound there of young um, Don Miller. And my soul is broken. Uh, very apt for that last segment. I must admit, uh, we're definitely going to try and get him on the show next week because um, I do like his style. I'll we'll play another song of his a little bit later. Um, just before uh, the song, we were talking about Indiana and Georgia and also Oklahoma. Well, unfortunately, um, you know, when uh, Mens uh, signed this um, uh, legislation to make it law to discriminate uh, and make it because of religious freedom, uh, it's supposed to be discriminate. It, you know, you, th- th- I just don't understand why they want religious freedom to actually make it hateful. They want to make religious freedom hateful. Why do you want to do that? Anyway, so Mark... <clears throat> Benioff, or Benioff, um, he's the C- Salesforce CEO, and um, he's just made good on a threat uh, that he tweeted on Wednesday evening, uh, warning that his uh, $4 billion company would dramatically reduce his investment in Indiana in a response to a religious freedom law that critics say is licensed to discriminate against the NLGBT individuals and uh, he's going to do that so that's going to cost a lot of money there's also um some other um organization i think it's like co-space with all the uh, all the geeks and god knows what i've forgotten the correct name for it i do apologize uh they're going to withdraw um their 50 million dollar uh, projects going there and also there's a young man a gay football fan he's now started a position petition oh good god i've had a nose face now teeth won't work somebody bring me a vodka um to move the big 10 title uh title game out of indianapolis um gay football fan is in, in wisconsin a uh, big Badgers fan, has started a petition requesting the Big Ten move its football title game out of Indianapolis, and the game is currently set for Lucas Oil Stadium this December. So we're going to see that. I've also had somebody tweeting saying that they hope that the Indy, um, the car race, uh, wondering if they can actually have some impact on that as well. And also, this is rather interesting. There's a church, a church, no less, a religion, another religion. So it's using his religious um, freedom to say it will reconsider the Indianapolis Convention if the governor signs uh, the discrimination bill, the anti-LGBT bill. The organizers of the large church gatherings say they're considering moving their events from Indianapolis over a religious freedom bill that the critics say will legalize discrimination against the LGBT people. The leaders of the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, wrote Wednesday to Governor Mike Pence, urging him to veto the proposal prohibiting laws that substantially burden the ability of people to follow their religious beliefs. Uh, This man's a total, well, what can I say? Dense, not fence or mens. I'm just just totally amazed how, how these people who are supposedly, or supposedly so intelligent, um, have high educations and they're acting like nasty little teenagers with a very bad tantrum. Um, this is really, really, really disgusting. I'm sorry, but, you know, um, shame on you. And shame of your hatred hiding behind God. You know, God is not about your hatred. It's not about your religion. It's about loving people and it's about compassion. That's where God comes from. Let's have some music. Then after this music, we're going to have the wonderful sound of and the wonderful interview of Julia Music. And uh, she's one of the organizers of the Ferndale Pride. And uh, we've got lots to talk about on that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm James D. And you're listening to Gay Detroit Radio, which is on www.dadradio.com. Let's have some music. (laughs) 
Oh, I know what. See if we can talk about Pride. How about a little rainbow song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, sung by, um, ooh, a very talented man called um, James D. <laughs> Who's that?
And yes, we are. Here we're back at uh, Gay Detroit Radio on Fridays at 9 p.m. on Radio OP. I've got a young girl with me called Julia. And um, it's Julia Music, right? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And uh, she's, uh, she's actually um, one of the organizers of Ferndale Pride. And that's going to be starting earlier this year, around about, is it May or March time? We are May 30th this year, or one day before last year. Okay. Um, now, listen, the, the Fernell Pride really started round right about, um, oh, uh, what was it, like uh, 2011, I believe. Yeah. And um, I came over here from New York, and I was over there for 20 odd years, and the big Pride marches are all over there, especially in New York. But what I couldn't understand was, how quiet it is over here because they don't even mention it on the television. You know, the Detroit Pride was like, uh. So I got rather pissed off thinking, well, why does not anybody sort of advertise it? And then also when I found out that Ferndale had a Pride, I found that about two years after moving to Detroit. So uh, are they going to try and sort of get more advertising out there? Well, we have engaged... Um a lot of newspaper um, advertisers, and we do have quite a bit through um, print and through um, social media and also through e-newspapers. Um, we've, um, we've contacted major television stations every year, and they just have not come out to, to um, our events. Oh, I can't so understand to... that. Uh, that really sort of <laughs> blows my mind away. I mean, the thing is, you know, um, don't they have gay people in television over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, this year I'm hopeful um, with the marriage case going to the Supreme Court, um, mm -hmm. lot, lots of um, television reporters were at affirmations this weekend and um, for the anniversary party. Yeah. They just threw. Yeah, because and it's. Um, I'm hopeful that the tide is turning a little bit and maybe we'll get some coverage. There are other festivals the same weekend who, unfortunately, or fortunately for them, but unfortunately for us, take away a lot of our coverage. Yeah, the, the the problem is I found now though because um, I got married in uh, New York a couple of years in 2013 because it just wasn't happening here. And uh, then they put the stay on it. Now, the thing that I'm finding, which is really frightening, uh, is the religious um, freedom thing. Uh, how is that going to affect people in Michigan? Is it going to really affect us or is it not? Because now it's just been passed in Indiana where even restaurants uh, can actually refuse to serve gay people. The only thing I'm really, f really getting a bit frightened of is the re this religious freedom. Do you think it's going to affect us more over here, or do you think it's going to be a passing phase? Well, it, it did go to the House this year. Um, it died on the Senate floor, so I'm hoping that, um, that it will remain dead and not brought up again. There is an adoption bill um, which would legalize the discrimination yeah. for um, gay people to adopt children, which... Um, I'm, I'm hoping it also dies before it becomes um, goes into law. Um, it would be very devastating for tons of children in the foster system and who need to be adopted um, to take away the action of GLBT. So, uh, how confident are <laughs> so you? Pride itself is not a very political event, so we're more about bringing together people and having a good time. Yeah, that's 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 the one because I really would like to come over this year, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I'm actually uh, starring in um, a little indie movie from Wayne University. Uh, it's a gay uh, music um, musical. Good heavens, uh, a gay movie, and uh, I mean that's called Stay. So I'm not going to be able to get over to there, but um, I'm definitely going to try uh, for next year. Now. The thing is, how confident are you, do you think, it's going to be with um, the April the 28th because they're actually going to start with the oral arguments on the gay marriages. Do you think we're going to succeed in this? Well, I'm, I'm hopeful that, um, that there will be a successful argument. Um, I think there, the case that, that is going up has a very strong argument. Mm -hmm. um, well, for why the thing is, I mean, they're not going to be able to take back 37 states. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, I mean, there's only now a handful of states that are just, was it 12 or 13 states now that are still holding out? And good old Michigan is one of them. So I hopefully think that's going to happen. I, I would think so. Um, it's not, however, it's um, scheduled before Pride, but we will be having a, a 
commitment ceremony with a rabbi, a priest, and um, our mayor performing the ceremony from our main stage. So people do have the option of having a commitment ceremony, and um, but it will not. We don't think it will be argued and done before. Okay. Event. Well, let's. I know what. Let's have some music, and then we'll just go on to what the fun part of Funday, uh, Ferndale Pride is, because um, I'd like to know what's going on, what kind of acts you've got, and um, we'll see how people, uh, what dates are you going to start, and how much it is for if people want to rent a booth, and all that usual stuff. So um, we'll have some music, and um, <clears throat> we should be right back after this little song, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to Gay Detroit Radio, and I'm James D. Ella me encanta Tu carita pide más, más, más Yes, welcome back to Gay Detroit Radio. I'm James D. And we're talking to a young girl called Julia Music. And she's one of the organizers of Ferndale Pride. Now, what a job to get into. Uh, what made you decide that you wanted to join an organization? Because I'm sure it's mainly volunteer work. So what made you want to do, uh, you know, decide to join like a pride movement? Um, well, actually, when I was about 16 years old, I started volunteering for an HIV AIDS organization and they had a part-time um, job where I was able to write a curriculum about teaching minorities about GLBT people. Mm -hmm. And so um, I 
really, I got into it. I loved it. Um, it's, it's really um, just educating people about GLBT people and that we are just everyday people. And um, That's what I it, always say. It's really, it's, it's really my purpose in life. So, yeah. Well, um, actually, funnily enough, uh, in New York, when I used to introduce the show, I used to say we are everyday people living everyday lives, having everyday problems, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to... And uh, people just don't realize it's when they turn around and say, you know, you've got the hidden agenda. Yeah, my hidden agenda is feeding the dogs, doing the laundry, <laughs> um, making sure that all my clothes are clean. You know, I mean, it's just like, where is the hidden agenda in that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> my hidden agenda is usually to throw a street fair. So um, <laughs> I do. But so I, I've been doing this um, for a long time. And, and when um, there were four of us who decided to start. Ferndale Pride, Craig Polica, who's one of our city council members, mm -hmm. our former mayor, Craig Covey, and Monica Mills, who's been a long-time ally to the community and volunteer, and myself, we decided to start Ferndale Pride in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just kind of it became its own living being. And, right. and last year, when Covey asked me if I wanted to take over, um, we've known each other for about 20 years now, and it was just a perfect time for me to step into his role and for him to start a minor part of his retirement because he still does a ton of stuff. All right, let's so let's talk about what sort of fun stuff because you've got um, okay. there's a, like a rainbow run in downtown Ferndale. Yeah, so actually our week starts um, this year right now. Our first event planned, and we have other events coming in the works. But the first event planned is May twenty second at Soho, <laughs> which is in downtown Ferndale. Um, they're going to have a hot daddies contest where we have older gentlemen who. Um, who dress up very um, sexy and collect <laughs> money for pride, and people get to vote on them, and then there are prizes to be won. It's a good time. Oh, and so then you, on the day you can actually have gay guys dressing up. Oh, they're going to hate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very little amount of clothing, but it's very fun. Um, and then on the day of, um, that's when our event comes, becomes a little more fun family uh, friendly in the morning. Um, we have the Rainbow Run in conjunction with our Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And um, we will have thousands of people out running and um, paint stations set up where they throw um, powder paint at the runners. And so you'll see people walking around covered in all the different colors of the rainbow. And then on the day of the event, we have our balloon launch from the main stage. Um, this year we're dedicating our event to Kevin Rogers, who was a business owner in downtown Ferndale and sometimes referred to as our own Harvey Milk. Mm -hmm. We'll launch balloons in his honor. We'll have our wedding ceremony, and then we'll have our entertainment start. We'll have a full lineup of entertainment on our main stage and our dance floor. And, of course, all our wonderful bars like Rosie O'Grady's and Soho and Zeke will be out there along with Dino's. And, oh, God, they sound uh, I mentioned them all, but they'll all, um, pretty much every single bar in Ferndale is a great supporter of Pride. So they'll have things going on inside their bars. Our street will be full of vendors and um and great food trucks. And then on the 31st, the next day, if you're still able to keep moving, we have a, a brunch at Rosie O'Grady um, with our drag queen starring um, Natalie Cole. Mm -hmm. And the next day is actually Transgender Day of Empowerment as well. So there'll be a full lineup of, of activities and affirmations um, to empower the transgender community. So, oh, sweet. Um, it'll be a very full weekend. And, and usually about a week later, the Bears come out. We have a Bears car wash. So if you want to see bears and mosquitoes washing cars. Oh, good God, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> now, um, if anybody wants to sort of like a vendor wants to come, do they just go to FerndalePride.com or something like that? Because also like performers, because I know you do have bands there, because a friend of mine, yeah. uh, Nikki Holland, she's done a couple of appearances there. Yeah, we have, um, if you go onto our website, you can. there's still time to apply to for the entertainment, uh -huh. um, and that's right there on the website underneath um, events. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, a space for vendors, and there's still a lot of room for sponsorship. We're looking for businesses and people to sponsor the event as well, because we do like to keep it free to the public, mm -hmm. um, and we're able to do that through our generous donations. And I can't um, say enough about how wonderful Motor City Casino Hotel has been to us, because they have been our, our headlining supporter since we started this event. Um, and, and they are just a wonderful connection to have in Detroit, and um, they're really supportive to us. Well, Julia, thank you ever so much. Just give me now contact numbers. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, how do they get in contact with you? 
Well, the easiest way is to go onto our website. Um, if, and if they go onto the website, um, at the bottom of the pages, there is my email. And then my phone number is 248-906-8683. And they can call that phone number. But because I'm actually a school teacher during the day, the email system works a little bit better for me. Okay. All right. Well, Juliet, thanks ever so much. What I'd like you to do is um, a little bit near the event. We'll uh, get you back on the show so you can promote it once again. So, But thank you ever so much for the interview. I really do appreciate it. It sounds, sounds like a lot of fun. And I can't, I'd can't. i love to get there this year, but unfortunately I can't. But we will get you back on the show. How's that? Thank you so much, James. And thank you for being a voice in our community. Oh, thank you. And have a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Gay Detroit Radio at www.radio-op.com. We'll be right back. Catch my breath Lately I've been trying to clear my head Lately I've been wondering what the fuck is wrong with me Staring at the clouds and asking why Why am I the one to fight inside I wish I had the answer But I'm no genius And any other man would say Just trust in I gotta find a way out of this dump that I call home But I never try to move out my comfort zone So I wait for my cherry to wait And I'll never land, I'll never come back down again Oh, yes I'll wait for my cherry to wait And you'll never see me You won't believe me, watch me fly Never had a love to keep me high had that chance to say goodbye Never had the nerve to speak up and say why I was crying I was dying deep inside I never wanted anyone to see that side I wish I had the answer But I'm no genius And any other man would say Just trust in Jesus I need to find the strength and that Time is running low But all I do is sit and stare Beg for hope So I wait for my cherry to wait And I'll never land I'll never come back down again Oh, yes I wait for my cherry to wait And you'll never see me You won't believe me Watch me fly Ah, uh, yes, 
that's uh, that's the lovely sound that I actually do like um, a couple of songs there. Uh, Pity and Mass a little bit earlier from Ebony Voice and also Cullen Blue. And uh, I'd like to get him on the show as well because uh, a very talented young man. And uh, we're going to be talking to him, I hope. I keep sort of prodding him and prodding him and he says, well, maybe, you know, so come on, diva, let's get you on this show. Anyway, quite a few things. Actually, I want to talk um, about some nice things that have happened for a change because uh, this one's been a bit of sort of doom and gloom, but uh, how about this? Joan Collins, 81, and uh, in an elegant, in cream fishtail skirt suit, and uh, she has become a dame from Prince Charles in front of her husband and children at Buckingham Palace. She looks absolutely fantastic. Joan Collins and her sister Jackie Collins, they t- actually, oh, what talented sisters. I've loved Joan Collins for years, and I was a real diehard dynasty fan. You know, just uh, absolutely wonderful. Well, good for her. 81, and she looks like she's 40. She looks bloody wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And also, um, Eddie Remain has now actually um, appeared on set as a trans woman, Lily Elbe. Uh, one of the first people to undergo gender reassignment surgery. Um, Redmayne is actually to play Lily Elbe, and uh, she had the gender reassignment surgery and uh, in The Danish Girl, which will be released on 27th of November. And it's based on a a novel by David Erberstoff, and he tells uh, the story of Elbe, uh, an artist who transitioned in the 1930s and died age 48 after a failure of a failed uterus transplant. How sad is that? Good, good. 1930s. Good heavens. They were still using coat hangers in those days, weren't they? Oh, that, that is awful, awful, awful. But um, he's going to be um, portraying this wonderful, brave woman. Very nice. And also, this is rather amusing. Um, A self-professed gay nerd actually um, has purchased the website of the Idaho state rep, Paul Shepard, who wants to impeach judges who rule in favor of same-sex marriages. Now, Idaho is very um, famous because of uh, a certain person called Larry Craig, who had a very wide stance, apparently. It was so wide, it engulfed the um, <clears throat> Gulf of Mexico. So, um, <laughs> as, and actually, yes, being in the airport toilets, and he was saying, Idy ho. And, uh, yes, wide st- Anyway, so, um, the, <laughs> God, I've got that. Oh, God, that was not a vision I wanted of Larry Craig. Thank you very much. Um, Idaho State Rep. Paul Shepard um, has never been shy, shy about how he feels about gay people, especially the marrying kind. And ever since the state's marriage ban was struck down, uh, Rep. Representative uh, Shepard has been trying to thwart the ruling and punish anyone responsible for it. My little prick. Jeez. Come on. You know, it's what I don't understand is like they're going all about this, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's when the two angels came down into Sodom and Gomorrah. And then all of a sudden the men came around believing there were two men and they wanted to rape and sodomize the men. This is where sodomy came from because of anal sex. So you would just sodomize them. But um, they say that we are the sodomites. Well, sodomites is part of rape and beating up and causing pain and cruelty and being disgustingly vile on somebody. What we are is just loving couples who want to live a normal life. There's nothing sodomite about that at all. Food for thought, anyway. Also, did you know there is an LGBT Amish site, and it's called LGBTAmish.com, and it's the world's first and only network for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered Amish and ex-Amish. Well, welcome 
to the world, young people. I'm really happy about that. You see, there's even, you know, I just don't understand why people, it's like being left-handed. Um, you know, for, in, in schools, especially the Catholic schools, my God, well, I've got to say this because I was brought up and I was raised Roman Catholic. And if you dared to write with your left hand, you had your knuckles nearly broken by these masochistic bastards of nuns. And they swacked your knuckles with these great big heavy rulers until you wrote with your right hand. And then you got a knuckle wrapping because your writing was disgusting. How stupid is that? And still to this day, they don't know why some people are left-handed and some people are right. And they're saying... Get over it. Some people are gay, some people are homosexual, some people are lesbian, and some people are transgendered. What has it got to do with you? How is it going to interfere with your life? Anyway, back to the LGBT image. Welcome to the world, young people, and uh, really happy. And uh, apparently, LGBTAmish.com uh, facilitates a conversation with the Amish communities about LGBT issues. A uh, conversation which cannot be ignored. Damn it, I tell you. And uh, the LGBTAmish.com offers support, education, networking opportunities, and friendship to those who share in our mission. This is a safe place to share stories and struggles. Do you know, actually, yeah, join the new media today. So please, you know, if you're in now, <laughs> somebody did bring up just a teeny weeny Easy point. How are they going to get in touch when they don't have anything electrical? How do you do that if you don't have a computer? Hmm. Moving on. Let's have some music. And uh, we're going to have a bit of Don Miller. And he's going to sort of finish the show for us. And I promise we will try and get him on the show next week. So here's a little song from Don Miller. I'm James D. And you're listening to... Gay Detroit Radio, which is on www.radio-op.com. I'll be Unfortunately, that's it for this week, so uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, once again, I love that young man. Uh, out of time, or the end of time, sorry, from Don Miller there. And uh, hopefully we'll have him on the show next week, if not the week after. And I hope he's getting better because he had some uh, surgery. I'm James D. I will see you same gay time, same gay place at Radio OP. <laughs> at radio-op.com and uh, if you don't get the show you can get us on gaydetroitradio.com once again I'm James D and you listen to Gay Detroit Radio bye now (laughs) 